This year is flying by. We've already got the November content update for Pokemon Go, and we haven't even hit Halloween yet. Speaking of Halloween, I'm planning a special Halloween live stream from New York City. So I'll be waking up bright and early to take the train into New York on October 31st to start a live stream around 10 a.m. Eastern. We'll be live streaming the Gigantamax Gengar debut, as well as catch grinding and shiny hunting as many of the costumed Halloween Pokemon as we possibly can. And remember, on Halloween, costumed Pokemon have a chance to drop rare candy and Rare Candy XL. So tune into the Halloween live stream here on YouTube, hop into the chat and say hello, and let's celebrate Halloween in Pokemon Go together. There's a lot of exciting stuff coming up this November in Pokemon Go, so let's dig into all the details. Starting off with max battles for the month of November. We know about six different max battles coming into power spots for this month. There's nothing new here, it's just gonna be the three Kanto starters and the three Galar starters. I'm fine with this because I feel like these starters weren't around long enough for everyone to get a good one for all six. So this will be a good chance to target any of these starters if you don't have one with good stats that's Dynamax capable. We are also getting a new event type called Max Mondays. I am super excited about this. I like that we're getting more and more events. My one complaint is that they're all at the same time, 6 to 7 p.m. That time does work for me personally, but I understand that it might not work for some people with different work schedules and stuff. So I would like to see some variation in the time, even if it was week to week. But I really like that we're going to get a chance to target specific Dynamax Pokemon and do a bunch within the hour. So Niantic did announce the featured Pokemon for the first four Max Mondays. On November 11th, we'll have Dynamax Charmander. On November 18th, we'll have Dynamax Drillbur. This is a Pokemon that has not yet been released in its Dynamax form. So this is a Dynamax debut here. Out of the four Max Mondays that we're gonna be going over here, Dynamax Drillbur is the one I think everyone should focus on because of Gigantamax Toxtricity coming in wild area later on in the month. Toxtricity is an electric poison type. This makes it double weak to ground. Excadrill is a great ground type raid attacker, so getting a good Dynamax Drillbur now is going to help set you up for success during Gigantamax Toxtricity in Wild Area. Monday, November 25th, we'll see Dynamax Bulbasaur, and then December 2nd, we'll have Dynamax Squirtle. Let's take a look at the raids coming up in November. We've got Lugia from November 4th to November 18th. Lugia will know its featured attack, Aeroblast. It does need to know this move in order to do the most damage, both in raids and in PvP. While Lugia is not the best raid attacker, it is a very solid Master League pick, and Aeroblast is the recommended move on PV Poke. So if you're into the Go Battle League, if you're into Master League, do these Lugia raids for sure. From November 18th to November 27th, we'll be getting Origin Form, Dialga, and Palkia. Now we already knew that we were getting both of these Pokemon for a wild area, but it's cool to see that they're going to be available in normal raids throughout the week. Both of these Pokemon need to know their featured attack slash adventure effect, to do the most damage. Between November 18th at 10 a.m. to November 24th at midnight local time, both of these Pokemon, when caught, will have a chance to have their signature adventure effect moves. So November 25th, 6th, and 7th, they won't be able to have their adventure effect moves, so definitely front load your origin form Palkia and Dialga raids. I want to emphasize these two Pokemon because their adventure effects are critical for grinding events like Calm Days, Spotlight Hours, etc. Dialga's Roar of Time can be useful if you're trying to extend your daily adventure incense and shiny hunt one of the Galarian birds, and Palkia's Spatial Rend ability can increase the radius that you can see Pokemon on spawning on the map. This is critical for catch grinding and maximizing the number of catches or shiny checks or whatever it is during events. So at the very least, make sure you get at least one of these Pokemon with the signature adventure effect. They are also both very good, both in PvE and in PvP. So I'd say get more than one if you're able to do a bunch of these raids, but at the bare minimum, get at least one of each with the adventure effect. Zashin and Zamazenta are returning for just one week. So if you missed out on their shiny debut, you now have a second chance to grab these legendary dogs. During this same week, we'll also have Regilecki and Regidrago. So from November 27th to December 3rd, there will be four different legendary Pokemon that could possibly spawn in five-star raids. Both Zashin and Zamazenta can be shiny, but Regilecki and Regidrago cannot. Neither Regilecki nor Regidrago are meta relevant as a raid attacker, nor in the Go Battle League. So these are really just dex entries here. During November, we'll have five different Pokemon in Mega Rays, but their schedule is not super straightforward. So let's take a look here. We'll start off the month with Mega Manectric from November 4th to November 11th. Then we'll rotate into Mega Salamence from November 11th to November 18th. During these two weeks in Legendary Raids, we'll have Lugia. Then from November 18th to 27th, this is gonna be the origin form Palkia and Dialga Raids. We'll have both Mega Beedrill and Mega Ampharos in Mega Raids at the same time. So when you see a Mega 
raid egg in a gym, it could be one of either of these Pokemon. Closing out the month, we'll have Mega Altaria from November 27th into December 3rd, which is the end of the max out season. Shadow Suicune will be in Legendary Shadow Raids during weekends in November. We'll have four spotlight hours in November, starting off with Surskit on November 5th. So on Tuesday, November 5th from 6 to 7 p.m. local time, Surskit will be appearing more frequently in the wild. The bonus for this spotlight hour will be double transfer candy. So you can start planning now for how you want to manage your storage for the double transfer candy bonus. On Tuesday, November 12th, we'll have Smolov in a spotlight hour with double evolution XP. Smolov is getting its shiny debut this month, but it will be appearing before the spotlight hour during the harvest festival. So if you don't want to be catching Smolov or you already have the shiny, you could go for the scientist metal progress and double evolution XP. On November 19th, we'll have two Pokemon with double catch Stardust, Teddy Ursa and Combi. Combi is a permanently boosted Stardust Pokemon granting 750 Stardust per catch. With double catch Stardust, that's 1500 dust per catch. With the star piece, that's 2250 dust per catch. So I'll definitely be prioritizing the Combi catches during the spotlight hour. This is going to be a great opportunity to gain 400, 500, 600,000 Stardust in just a short one hour period. And then we'll have Joltik spotlight hour on Tuesday, November 26th with double catch XP. Raid hours this month are a little interesting because they don't one-to-one -one match the Pokemon coming into Legendary Raids. Lugia will have two Raid hours, November 6th and November 13th. But then here's where it gets interesting. On November 19th, Nihiligo will get a Raid hour. And then the very next day, November 20th, Tapu Koko will get a Raid hour. Then on the 21st, we'll have Origin Form Dialga, and on the 22nd, Origin Form Palkia. So we'll have four raid hours in a row. Nihiligo on the 19th is actually going to overlap with the Combi Spotlight Hour, which I'm kind of disappointed about because I need more Nihiligo candy, but I also need more Stardust, so it's going to be tough to choose. Maybe I'll just do both at the same time. I don't know. We'll see. Then Tapu Koko, then Dialga, then Palkia, and then we go right into the Wild Area Global on 23rd and 24th. So I think what they're doing here is trying to build up some hype leading up to Wild Area. And then on November 27th, we'll have all four of those Pokemon, Zacian, Zamazenta, Regilicki, and Regidrago all having one raid hour at the same time. So we went over max battles, max Mondays, legendary raids, mega raids, raid hours, and spotlight hours. Now let's dig into the events for the month of November. November 2nd and 3rd, we'll see Go Battle Weekend. So if you're into PvP, this is a great event to do a ton of battles in a short time. From Thursday, November 7th at 10 a.m. to Tuesday, November 12th at 8 p.m., we'll have the Harvest Festival, and we do already have the details for this event. The event bonuses will be Double Catch Candy, Increased Chance to Encounter Shiny Pumpkaboo, so Shiny Pumpkaboo boosted odds, and then Mossy Lure modules will attract different Pokemon during the event, such as Alolan, Executor, Snorlax, Pumpkaboo, and Smoliv. And remember, Smoliv can be shiny. In the wild, we'll have Oddish, Execute, Hopip, Sunkern, Miltank, Zigzagoon, Bunnelby, and all sizes of Pumpkaboo, Smoliv, and as a rare spawn, we'll have the Super Size Pumpkaboo. In field research tasks, we'll have Pumpkaboo of any size as well as Smoliv. We'll have a $2 paid research ticket with this event, granting two Mossy Lure modules, one Incense, one Lucky Egg, and extra encounters with Smoliv. On Sunday, November 10th, we'll have Mankey Community Day. Details for this event were announced a few weeks ago, but let's go over them anyway. I'm pretty excited for this community day. We're going to have triple catch XP, double catch candy, and double chance for trainers level 31 and up to receive candy XL for catching Pokemon. Primeape and Annihilate will also be getting a featured attack, Rage Fist. Both Primeape and Annihilate have meta relevance in the Go Battle League, so whether you're grinding XP or grinding for a PvP Pokemon, I do think this community day is a good one to do. November 15th to 17th, we'll have a ground-themed event called Simply Groundbreaking. We don't know the details on this one yet. November 18th to 22nd, we have an event called Into the Wild. This is leading us up to the Wild Area event on the 23rd and the 24th. The details for Wild Area have already been announced, but let's go over some high-level details here. During Wild Area Global, we'll see Gigantamax Toxtricity, so remember, do your Drillbur Dynamax raids during the November 18th Max Monday to get ready for that. Wild Area will have a new type of Pokemon called Mighty Pokemon. These Pokemon are more likely to have high attack, defense, and HP ratings. So I assume that means like a higher IV floor. That means a higher chance at a Hundo, higher chance at a Shundo. These Pokemon are more likely to be XL or XXL in size, and they're gonna be more difficult to capture. However, we can use the new Pokeball, at least new to Pokemon Go, the Safari Ball, to increase our chances to catch these mighty Pokemon. Origin Dialga and Palkia will be available in raids during Wild Area, but if possible, I would encourage you to do your Origin Form Palkia and Dialga raids before Wild Area, so during Wild Area, you can focus on shiny hunting and catch grinding. 
we'll have two costumed Pikachu that you're going to want to be shiny hunting during Wild Area Global. Pikachu Popstar and Pikachu Rockstar will take the stage for two days during this event. We'll also get a new costume, Snorlax wearing a studded jacket, and this shiny is available as well. Wild Area Global has so much to go over that it deserves its own dedicated video. So that's all we're going to go over for this November overview. The last event in November and the last event of the entire Max Out season is November 27th to December 1st called the Max Out Finale. We don't know exactly what this event will be, but we do know that the Max Out season ends on Tuesday, December 3rd. November is definitely looking pretty good in Pokemon Go. Wild Area stands out as the most exciting thing coming this November, but there's a couple other standouts as well, like the shiny Smalo debut, Mankey Community Day with Triple Catch XP, the Combi and Teddy Ursa Spotlight Hour with Double Catch Stardust, and the introduction of a whole new event, Max Mondays. So we're getting a brand new event type. So let me know in the comments what you're most excited about for the month of November. Thank you for watching this video, and we'll see you in the next one.